Let's get straight to our next guest, and that is the Shadow Minister for Defence, Andrew Hastie. Andrew, thank you so much for your time. Big weekend of politics and big week ahead in Parliament, it would seem. I want to ask you a lot about my earlier guest, but first of all, Labor's Industrial Relations Bill. They've struck a deal with ACT Senator David Pocock. Some amendments made. The Prime Minister says this is a great day for workers. Uh, business groups say it will take Australia back to the 1970s. Where does the coalition stand now, given some amendments have been made? Look, Senator Pocock might have struck a deal, but this is still, in substance, a very bad bill. Uh, it's the transfer of power from the little guy, small businesses, to corporates and unions. And it's going to make our small business community less productive, less competitive, because of the, the cost that this will impose upon them, mm. let alone the increased strikes that we can expect with the introduction of multi-employer bargaining. So this is a bad bill and we oppose it. Yeah, I'm trying to find someone apart from the obvious who think it's a good idea and it's really tough to do, I promise you. The PM also said today that his predecessor should apologise off the back of the Bell report into the secret ministries. Uh, Scott Morrison, does he owe the Australian people an apology? Erin, uh, Mr Morrison made a mistake. We don't need to relive it. Now, we're open to working with the government to legislating some of the recommendations that Justice Bell uh, made in her report, which builds on the Solicitor General's advice. Uh, but Anthony Albanese, our Prime Minister, needs to make a decision. Does he want to keep fighting Tories and, and litigate this through the next week in the Parliament? Or does he want to govern for Australia and get on with the business which he's been elected for. So um, there's been a line drawn under the Morrison government. That came in May when mm. we lost the election. And now Mr Albanese needs to get on with leading this country. I think that line needed to be drawn in much thicker permanent marker, particularly for the Labor That's government, right. because there's constantly referred to, isn't it? Let's talk about defence now and, and the story that I spoke about off the top and spoke to Wes Hennessy about as well. Do you think that these officers who served in Afghanistan should be handing back medals and honours? The first point I want to make, Erin, is that this is ultimately about political leadership. In this country, we have civilian control of the military. So Richard Miles, on October 10, stood up in a press conference and said that he takes full responsibility for the defence portfolio. So the question the Coalition has for the Defence Minister, Richard Miles, is why are you starting this process again? Mm. What do you hope to achieve by it? And what outcomes can we expect? Now, the special operations community has been through a very tough time over the last six and seven years. And the community's had a tough time. Morale is low. And yeah. Peter Dutton, as the, the defence minister over the last 18 months before the election, set about restoring that morale. And we made good headway of that. So Mr Miles needs to step up and own this and come clean this week. The second point is military leadership. We need one standard for all. And so if we're going to re review medals at the, the tactical level, then I think we also need to review medals that were awarded at the operational and strategic level. The Brereton report was very interesting and there was one paragraph that stood out to me where it talked about JTF 633, the commander that was based in the UAE, which had uh, authority and control of the operations in Afghanistan. Now, they were awarded distinguished service crosses. The CDF has one himself. Yeah. And during the time that some of these events occurred, so I think we should not just review those medals, we should review medals going all the way to the top because in the military, it's one standard for all. That's, that, that is just a, a baseline principle of discipline in the military. Yeah, well said. It is, as I said, it's a really fascinating debate about leadership and not just leadership in general, but in an organisation like the military. I want to ask you about uh, something that it appears China and France are on the same page about one thing at the moment, and that's their dislike of AUKUS, the Chinese government labelling it a threat to peace. Uh, does the government need to come out and really strongly back this? I know that Albanese has said that AUKUS is here to stay, but what should the rhetoric be around AUKUS? Well, AUKUS is here to stay. It's probably the most significant uh, trilateral agreement that, was, that has been inked since, AUK uh, since ANZUS, rather. So AUKUS mm -hmm. is very significant and it's going to deliver nuclear submarines and a host of other emerging capabilities, which is critical to defending this country. So China can say what they like. AUKUS is here to stay and it brings together the US, the, U the UK and Australia in a very important three-way military uh, agreement to share to technology and also... Uh, people, frankly, because we're going to have to work together to develop our submarines and also share new and emerging technologies. You've got one more sitting week of Parliament left. What are the priorities for the Liberal Party or what do you hope to achieve before the break at Christmas? Our job is to hold this government to account. So every single day when we step into the Parliament, our job is to make sure the government 
is doing its job, that it's governing well, uh, probing and challenging questions for the Prime Minister and his team. And of course, we're in a rebuilding phase as well. So we want to signal to the Australian people that we'll be fit and ready to govern in two and a half years and building on Peter Dutton's budget in reply speech that he gave uh, several weeks ago. So we've got a lot of work to do and we're, we're mission focused, which is delivering for the Australian people. You still speak like a military man. Uh, Shadow Minister for Defence, Andrew Hastie, many thanks for your time tonight. Thanks, Erin. Good to be with you. Thank you.